Alrighty, hello and good morning. So, uh, I'm going to be waiting uh, just a little bit here to uh, kind of start all the discussions proper since, well, it doesn't seem like we have uh, very many people in here just yet. It's probably going to take a minute as per usual. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be the first kind of uh, ogre panel discussion type thing. Now, I'm saving the um, kind of like lore related stuff for its own part. Uh, actually, um, Kind of a uh, kind of more stuff than uh, than was expected uh, was requested out of that, so I think most of the uh, kind of like story and lore and all that kind of stuff, um, unless it comes up today, I'm probably gonna go make separate parts on all those because god dang, there was a lot to cover. Uh, hell, the uh, the uh, there was one question that came in a couple days ago uh, in regards just to how many you know mythological things are referenced throughout the series and you know what's a reference to what, etc. Like, that alone could be a multi-part thing, so <laughs> either way, uh, we'll, uh, you know, we'll get to that as we get to it. Uh, like I said, we'll be uh, starting the full discussion here proper, but uh, but yeah, uh, I mean, long and short of it, the subject of today's thing is uh, just, I I've gotten a feeling um, throughout playing the series, you know, for a hell of a long time now, I always kind of had the feeling here that, holy crap, what in the... Okay, sorry, randomly uh, cats chuffing each other out in the background here, as it happens. Uh, but yeah, I, I've gotten the feeling for many years now that, honestly, it feels like Mitsuno always wanted to make a, uh, wanted to make a tabletop game. Um, and, and it's kind of funny because, uh, because quite frankly, most of the mechanics in the series, as far as I'm concerned, are absolutely perfect for that. Um, and in fact, uh, the, I specifically wanted to cover this because the other day, I should probably save the story for later, but uh, the other day, let's just say we were uh, playing some betrayal, and there was a situation that came up while I was going and uh, and actually playing um, uh, playing some tactics ogre in the background, and uh, it it was just like one of those moments where like it everything just lined up perfectly. Like it was a case where I had a character that could do everything, wound up being the traitor in that game. And uh, let's just say that the ability to teleport is super handy when you're trying to go and hunt down every other player on the map. Um, but that being said, at the same time, like I said, I was playing some uh, some tactics ogre in the background, and had the exact same thing come up. Namely, I was playing some uh, vanilla uh, to PSP there, and uh, there was a one of my favorite uh, units, you know, just basic generic soldier guy. And uh, and yeah, so I give him a uh, give him blink walk. I have him teleport forward. You know, have him go get a, a double slash off on a guy that I needed gone a few platforms over. Um, so this was San Bronza, so it's basically just a map where you have all kinds of weird elevation changes and stuff like that. Well, anyway, so you know, I have the guy teleport forward. He gets his double slash off. Everything's all fantastic. Until somebody flies up and crits him straight off a cliff. Now, I think he's dead at that point. Because, uh, you know, he was on his last life. Been using the guy for, like, months now. And, yeah, I, I always put him in risky positions. And in this case, you know, he gets flown off a cliff, you know, just a friggin' cliff, and that's it. So I'm thinking, okay, that's the end of that guy. That's a bummer. That's one of my favorite characters gone. And then he just blinks right back onto that platform because I forgot that uh, that actually having blink walk lets you uh, lets you get saved from falling, just like being able to fly does. Interesting thing as far as that goes. Do you imagine if this was like if this was a tabletop game, like if you had like let's say you had ogre battle as uh, you know as the main basis for that, and like let, let's say you just had a case where you know, you, uh, you're like, okay, you know, you have your squad, like, say you play as one of these squad leaders here. Like, this would be perfect for that, because you just basically pick your four grunts that you want with you at all times. You have each player at the table just go and, you know, be a squad of their own or that kind of thing. And, uh, and yeah, just honestly, original Ogre Battle mechanics. Like, if, if there's anybody that happens to be seeing this, that, for example, you know, is familiar with the, you know, design concepts or whatever else of a tabletop game and would be interested in making that happen, like, we could set up a Kickstarter or some crap like that. Like, honestly, at this point, I'm pretty sure Matsuno is retired out of any projects, but if anybody were to go and just, like, let's say, take the overall setting of, like, March of the Black Queen or OB64 or any of the games, really, like, you've basically got all the material there to already get your stories and scenarios and everything else going. You've got all the mechanics already in place. Like, if you had the squad mechanic mixed together with a lot of the ways that, you know, skills work in later tactics over games. You know, it 
there's just like freaking Bob's your uncle and all that stuff. Like you have a, a ridiculous amount of uh, potential rule sets and other things to follow. I mean, there's <laughs> you've got scenarios out the ears. So honestly, given how difficult it is to get games uh, made at this point, um, especially you know ones that uh, the people will actually go out and you know, that will consider backing and all that kind of thing. Like, I legitimately consider that uh, this would probably be one of the better ways to actually move the series forward, given, you know, given a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, well, let's just say less than ideal uh, situations as far as, uh, as far as the series goes at this point. Especially, you know, head creators shuffled around all over the place, kind of burnt out on the industry as a whole. You know, it's um, it's one of those things that I think could be potentially very useful. But I'd like to hear some feedback from other folks, see what, uh, what they think. You know, hell, who knows, maybe we should just set up a Kickstarter for this kind of thing. Maybe uh, maybe that might be something. So right now I'm looking for somebody with a good bit of charisma, a good bit of alignment. Like, even this as a mechanic, you know? Like, I could really see this working in a tabletop type game. So this story that I was talking about, now that there's actually a few people here, I guess I should probably go ahead and share this thing. So if anyone here happens to have seen the, uh, well, the uh, the fairy run, you may potentially recognize Steve, the murder fairy. Well, so the other day, we're playing Betrayal, I'm, like, I'm just sitting there, you know, where everyone's in the background doing their usual arguing over what's allowed. So, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm just there, you know, just sitting and trying to play through San Bronza. And, uh, and yeah, sure enough you know, run into the situation where they're like, okay, you're the traitor now, and I'm looking down at my cards. And I have a guy who has gotten, like, consistent stat-ups every turn up to that point. I have a card that that gives uh, gives bonus rolls for sacrificing some of those bonus stats. I have another card that essentially allows me to re uh, regenerate bonus stats. Another one that allows for healing if anything falls below its default value. And, you know, they're armed on top of that with a thing that was essentially buffed due to some other random event prior. So it was absolutely ridiculous at this point. Um, so at any rate, you know, everything seems pretty well positive. And then I'm going and I'm reading the rule set. So if you've ever played Betrayal, um, basically the way it works is once you get to a situation where, like, let's say, you know, you, you get a particular set of circumstances that occurs. This makes a, tri a uh, trigger happen. For the traitor. Um, and now suddenly one person leaves the room, they betrayed everybody, and usually their goal is to kill off the other players or do some other sort of dubious thing in the background. Well, at any rate, uh, by the way, you may have noticed uh, this is uh, running the, uh, the limited edition, or, or yeah, it was limited edition uh, version of this. And uh, you may notice everything runs uh, much, much faster if you want it to. I'm going to have everyone else kind of bum rush in here. Just kind of carve their way through here. Do I still have Liz? Yes, I do. I've got Liz, my flying squad. Have them fly down here and do a little bit of a little bit of assassination on that uh, capital there. Uh, this is typically how I like to do this whole scenario. I'm probably going to skip getting Canopus this time. Just for the sake of making it a little bit easier. But anyway. So yeah, going through this whole scenario, it wound up being absurdly one-sided. Like, it, just from from the very get-go, everybody was saying, like, you know, there's no way that this is going to be fair. And then, yeah, I'm reading the rules, and they're like, yeah, you're basically invincible, and also, you know, you get all of these extra bonuses, and you get bonus stats, and you get traps all over the place, and nobody's allowed to communicate on the other side. Which is funny, because that particular rule actually killed off one of the uh, people uh, that I was supposed to be playing against. Uh, but anyway, anyway, point being, like, could you imagine, like, having this, like, this game going on with that kind of, uh, like, let's say you just pick any random scenario, like, you have some, let's say you have the, uh, the Sky Island map, right? Like, okay, so, you know, you've got all kinds of flying units everywhere, you know, you have to have at least one flying squad, and your goal is to go take over this capital or whatever else, and say partway through, somebody turns out, well, I guess having the traitor scenario wouldn't really work in this case. But still, you know, like, let's say ever you have this whole cooperative kind of thing going on, and at any point, if anybody loses their flyer, you know, they fall off a cliff or something like that. It's just, there's, I don't know, there's, there's a whole bunch of scenarios there. Like, maybe you have another one set in, like, Let Us Cling Together or something like that, and they're just 
a bunch of random nobodies that were happened to be living in Rhyme during the you know the invasion or whatever of that place. And so maybe you start off a similar type story off in the background there somewhere. Or maybe let's say you're you know doing OB sixty four and you happen to be let's say partway through the game and all your characters are people on let's say the Western Division or whatever else and they're you know they're kind of forced to be traitors halfway through this whole thing. Like there's so many scenarios that they put together, and everything that they bring Matsuno in for is for writing scenarios. That's like his big forte, more or less. Um, like, in all honesty, the actual dialogue is a little bit uh, iffy um, sometimes. I should mention that's only for the new stuff. Like a lot, of, a lot of the older stuff had some weird dialogue sometimes, but yeah, some of the new stuff, especially for FF14, is uh, a little bit iffy. But point being, I think the guy has wanted to make a tabletop game for the longest time. Uh, namely, just look at any of the mechanics of any of the games, and the fact that he really practically made that. Uh, if you've uh, ever seen Crimson Shroud, that's basically what that is. Um, although I will say it's a very condensed type experience, so definitely not for everybody. But uh, anyway, you know, one way or another, that's just kind of there. Uh, what else? I mean... I think that more or less conveys the idea there. So, uh, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully, like if an, enough people are interested, I actually might go and set up a um, eh, maybe just go set up a little bit of a petition to make that happen. Maybe just uh, go put out a thing that uh, if anybody happens to know how to, let's say, design tabletop games or something like that, we may potentially have a very, very good setting for it. Now, granted. The usual type of thing comes up where I know um, uh, somebody tried to do the same thing for Armored Core a long time ago. It didn't end up going so well, and that was a company that is a lot less attached to its intellectual properties, all things considered, or at least a lot less aware of stuff going on for it. So, you know, maybe um, maybe there's some other ways around that, but it would be very... I still think it would be really fun to uh, potentially get that idea pitched to them somehow. Like, to... Um, uh, what's it? To... Uh, to I guess they're Square at this point. What, what do you really even call them? The thing that used to be Square and everything else. That. It's like, yeah, I mean, you've already got all your items all nicely categorized for each game. You already got all that going. Like, what, why do they have to... Why does it necessarily have to be another game, you know? That's the question. That's the question. Ah, but one can dream. One can dream. I mean, I know personally, I can probably think of endless amounts of uh, situations. Ooh. Oh, conveniently, I missed the one guy I needed to miss. Fantastic. Fantastic. By the way, um, if you have never seen this version, again, this is the uh, the PS1 uh, limited uh, uh, version of uh, of uh, Ob. Well, Mars the Black Queen, that Ob original, Ob OG. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But uh, yeah, it's uh really, really good. Like, it's weird because it gets, uh, gets panned. I've seen a, a few times where I've seen where they're like, oh, yeah, no, it's not as good as the other one because of one reason or another, but Fine. honestly, it, I would argue this is by far the better version. You get a lot of little, uh, graphical improvements all over the place. Uh, I think the music sounds a lot nicer. You just get a lot of, uh, good little nifties in it. Uh, the sprites are a little bit different, as you can probably tell. Um, funnily enough, yeah, this is the one that ended up getting... Uh, referenced uh, when it came to um, uh, TOPSP. Uh, if you uh, if you ever noticed the statues in the Palace of the Dead, it's uh, the characters from this. All right, do we have anything to potentially make this a little bit more viable for these folks? Uh, maybe drop a fool card on? Yeah, probably. Probably. This is kind of before the party's all set up, so all these initial grunts have a little bit of a hard time winning fights sometimes. Uh, but yeah, you know, I've been noticing that um, uh, that when it comes to uh, to this version, it seems like the formations are a little bit better. And I'm kind of hoping at some point that uh, maybe uh, Mr. Bale shows up and confirms some of that. Because I know he's played the ever-loving hell out of the uh, original. A lot more than I have. But yeah, I think the PS1 version is just better in every way. But uh, already then. Anyway, uh... As far as sound's concerned, uh, since there's a few folks here, uh, is everything sounding okay? Uh, is it all good to hear everything? Is, you know, all of that usual concernage? Right, uh, I think 
they might be able to do this. Yeah, you know what? Let's drop this for safety. The squad's getting a little bit busted up here. But yeah, if anybody could let me know how we're doing on sound, that would be quite handy right now. Oh, and uh, by the way, for the folks that were asking for it last time, the, um, the the guide on where to actually find all the games and what they run on and all the mods and all that kind of thing, I'm still putting together the article version of that, so that will be up hopefully today. Uh, I can't really say for sure. It depends how time goes, but um, hopefully that'll be up today. So, uh, so yeah, keep an eye out for that if that's what you were looking for. There we go. We got the town. Almost, almost, almost. They have one more fight in order to be able to take that town. Luckily, we have an extra hierophant. Let's go ahead and put everybody to go take a little bit of a nap. Even though, the, yeah, the squad's got almost nothing going down for them damage-wise. Uh, but, yeah, this should sort out that little problem. Uh, the witch is the only scary thing about this. Uh, it's funny. There's no upgraded version of the witch in March of the Black Queen, but if they end up keeping up with levels and all that kind of thing, they are friggin' devastating. Like, even the, just the basic version actually keeps up going. Hello there, Mr. Fanboyness. Haven't seen in a minute. How are things? So yeah, this is uh, this was going to be the first uh, kind of discussion stream kind of thing. Uh, mostly I just wanted to test uh, to see how many folks would show up. But, uh, but yeah, this was going to be the first discussion kind of thing. Uh, ultimately, I uh, decided that uh, when it came to a lot of the like more in-depth lore type stuff that was probably better off to do as just regular videos instead of this kind of thing, but um, for um, for everything else, I think this works out pretty darn well. Mm. That's pretty freaking convenient, so I just gotta strength up on everybody for the entire map. Ah, man. Like, oh man, go save Gilbert and Canopus. I... Yeah, no, for the sake of speed, we're not going to. By the way, this is the one negative, I have to say. Uh, this is the one negative about the PS1 version. What do you hear? Even when you go to the menu, it's it's muted for some reason. I, I don't know. It's just some weird quirk uh, that came to, that came with this version. But yeah, I absolutely love uh, March of the Black Queen. I've been obsessing over this particular version lately. But yeah, they they improved basically everything. Um, they, as you can see, everything looks better. Everything it runs a little bit uh, faster. It's funny because uh, again, I mentioned earlier the fact that. You know, there was a little bit of load time had come up a few times when it came to, uh, to discussions of this game. It's like there's like half a second of, uh, of loading every now and then for some of the fights. Ah, oh, that guy's toast. Oh, oh no, I thought he survived with one health. Oh well, that's fine. That's fine. He'll do. Uh, he'll do all right later. But uh, but yeah. So uh, so yeah, th this version like they, I believe they updated a lot of the formations. The AI is better. You may notice that they're actually all congregating and trying to defend their capital as opposed to sending everybody out like dang flies. So that's pretty nice. Uh, you don't have enough. Uh, you don't have the same kind of uh, capital sniping that happens all the time. Uh, so if you've played the original a bunch, uh, there's one thing that the AI, AI loved to do, which was basically keep everybody busy. And then they would send, they would do exactly what I'm doing right now, where they would just, if you ever left your capital undefended, they would send somebody in a beeline across the map to go take it. Now, usually they ended up sending some infantry or something, and so they're just stuck on a boat, you know, paddling in the middle of the ocean forever. Um, and uh, yeah, then on some maps you get extraordinarily unlucky, and they're like, hey, let's go send all the griffins out there, and then like three seconds into the battle, they've already taken your capital and you get kicked off the map. So. Overall, you know, less than ideal scenario there. Uh, but yeah, um, a lot of the classes got rebalanced for this one, like uh, the, uh, the Samurai's ranged abilities are a bit stronger. I, I still prefer using them in the front row, but uh, they're about twice as strong as uh, the actual front row attack. Uh, you have things like the uh, Princess getting a little bit of a nerf. Uh, you have... Um, uh, what is it? I feel like uh, the Beastmaster's got a little bit of a, a, little bit of a defense boost. Uh, but yeah... So there's a, a bunch of little changes. Um, on top of that, yeah, some some of the formations got changed. Uh, uh, if you notice, all the uh, the looks of the characters are a bit better. And on top of that, you get the awesome thing where, like, if you have a unique character, they stay unique, and this includes bosses as well. Uh, that they all have unique looks to them, and if you change their classes, they still retain those looks. Ninjas got anything? Um, I feel like they're a little stronger. Um, I have to say, I thought they were pretty strong in the original, personally. Like, I've seen opinions going on both sides of that. But 
like one squad that I absolutely loved my first time through uh, when I wasn't doing a challenge run uh, was essentially uh, two ninjas and a paladin, uh, just because they got those three attacks early on. So yeah, um, and then just like if they ever got injured, we would swap them out for the back row for their casting abilities. And that stuff worked out pretty darn nifty-like. Right, so, uh, da, 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 da. how are you looking? Um, you guys are all a little bit jacked up right now. I want to hopefully be able to take this town over here. Uh, I need to put my second griffin onto somebody, and that probably should be that cleric squad back there. But, uh, yeah, I have to say the balance in, in this just feels nicer. Um, that being said, uh, weirdly enough, the cockatrice is, is one that got nerfed straight into the ground. Um, so yeah, if you were ever scared of cockatrices coming in and petrifying everybody, yeah, they, they have, they went from like 50 something percent chance on their petrify ability to roughly 15 to 20 percent. Let's see, so what oddball SRW games do you think will get a fan translation next year? I have absolutely zero idea. Um, uh, throwing it out there, let's say, I think there was like one on the N64. Uh, let's go ahead and place bets on that one. <laughs> Why not? Uh, now, Steinberg here and everybody else that's attacking from the front, I'm actually going to let them uh, just basically fight until they get killed off. They're literally just here to do damage and waste time up to, until I can get my uh, Griffin Assassin squad in, into the back of the castle there. So, so yeah, this is a, a handy little tactic that still seems to work in both versions. So they'll, they'll just keep fighting to the death. And, uh, yeah, that hopefully will leave only one or two squads for Liz here to fly in and take out. Now, ideally I would have had her move here, but I want her to start making a bit more of an angle, so hopefully we don't take too many losses. Uh, gonna try not to level up the leader as much. Uh, but yeah, so, as far as general discussion on the series goes here, um, so again, since there's more folks here now, what I was trying to cover this time is what do you guys think of the fact that it, that it kind of seems and kind of seemed throughout the series that Mr. Matsuno was actually, well, wanting to make a bit of a tabletop game. Um, namely, like, if you go back to this one, you know, you have a lot of, uh, a lot of similar things uh, to something like D&D, &D, for example. You've got all your alignment mechanics going on. You've got all of your uh, different uh, preferences of different characters going on. You've got all, all your different tricks and bag of tricks in each of these games all over the place. And, uh, and yeah. So... There's all kinds of stuff all over the place. Like especially like if you had a say a tabletop type scenario where you were this is okay, so they give us some moon rose. Like let's say, you know, you're in the March of the Black Queen scenario, but you've got your skills from the uh, from the tactic soaker games and stuff like that, and you know, like say each each individual player or whatever else would be a squad leader for March of the Black Queen. And then you've got your uh, four grunts that are with you. And I don't know, I just think it would make for a fantastic tabletop game. Like, I don't know how many, uh, how much crossover there is between the two genres. Good God, like, when there's a good... <laughs> I just love tabletop games. It's just the utter shenanigans that can, can occasionally occur. It's amazing. Let's see, I was thinking the Neo after the GC fan translation gets into hacking, and given the uh, the Wii is so like the GameCube, and yes, the GC translation has staggered back life. Interesting. Hmm. I thought uh, I thought uh, trying to get anything done for the GameCube was a massive pain in the rear. All right, so Stain Squad is finally eliminated. Stain Bug. I think I have enough cards to make this happen. I, if you've never tried the strategy, by the way, the general idea is if you have at least a couple attack cards, you can usually just like blitz a Griffin Squad straight into the back of their castle. And usually they'll only have a couple battles to fight through, so as long as they have a cleric or something like that and some decent attack power behind them, you usually can... Well, let's see, do we even want to save this guy? Nah, no, he's fine. Fight to the death! Um, but yeah, uh, you can usually uh, pull off some shenanigans. Actually kind of funny, because I was planning to originally do the, uh, the Griffin run for this discussion today. And then I finally thought about some of the settings and... Finally tried something different with EPSXE today, and uh, finally got this version working. Uh, which, by the way, uh, one thing that's been requested a couple times that I do plan to do sometime within the next month. Um, so whenever one of the current runs ends, <clears throat> I was actually uh, going to uh, 
to try one that Mr. Vale suggested if you were here when he did. Um, in that technically, it's supposed to be possible, and it's theoretically possible, uh, to get every single recruitable character in March of the Black Queen in a single run. Now, the amount of shenanigans required is pretty intense. Like, it's, uh, it's to the point where you basically have to top off and bottom off your Chaos Frame several times over the course of the story. So, yeah, it, it basically involves, like, at the very start, you have to, let's see, you get Gilbert and you, well, Lands is automatic, Gilbert and Canopus are fairly easy. Then you have to, uh, let's see, there's at least, I want to say, two or three characters you have to bottom it out for. But then you also have to be able to get the, uh, the Brynhildr. So, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that, uh, that could potentially be interesting about that. But I specifically wanted to do it on this version, because A, it's just nicer, and B, the fact that it basically gives you saves during fights. So, for example, when you need to have an entire map just conveniently drop a reputation ups over and over and over, it just happens to be a lot easier to do. In fact, um, I kind of wonder if that's when it, uh, when it came to TOPSP. There's, I mean, there's a bunch of discussions to be had as far as what was referenced to what, you know, and how. But I kind of wonder if this was the kind of origin of the idea of, uh, of what became the chariot system later. Where they're like, you know, we just want you to be able to mess with all the systems and go play with it. This is your toy box kind of thing. Which, granted, completely jacked up balance, but it was still fun. You know, you didn't have to use it if you didn't want to. And they give you a neat little title if you didn't. But I want to say that this was the kind of origin of that idea, because, um, uh, you know, I, I haven't checked or confirmed this, but I think uh, Limited Edition um, OB uh, March of the Black Queen came out first. Um, yeah, I, I think it came out before, uh, a good bit before OB64. I could be wrong on that, because there were two versions that the West got, and you got the basic version and the Limited Edition version, um, which, uh, yeah, Limited is just so much better. Aside from that whole sound muting thing, uh, I, I still don't know what that's about. I'm assuming they wanted people to know, you know, like maybe they ran into situations where people just didn't know that their game was not paused or something. I know I ran into that situation a few times when I was first playing through it. But you get uh, in-battle saves, you get uh, you get a little thing that just basically tells you, like, okay, you're, uh, you know, your game's paused because everything is muted and it's eerie and weird and just so you know, it's like that now. So, I'm not sure why they did it that way. I'm, that's the only thing I could think of from a design perspective that's, uh, that would explain it. But, uh, you know, makes sense if that's the case. I could definitely see that uh, coming up as an issue for some folks. Um, if you didn't know, by the way, when um, when Ogre Battle first came out, they actually had relatively little faith in the product, uh, because they... I mean, Tactics Ogre came out immediately after. They're like, okay, just so you know, no one's gonna buy OP, let's go make, you know, TO here. This seems like something more folks will like. And then, apparently, they were kind of taken aback by the fact that it actually sold really well and reviewed really well. Uh, just because of the sheer amount of awesome mechanics and everything else, and... I mean, they... Okay, to explain, apparently real-time strategy games and all that kind of thing do not fly in Japan. Like, it's just a complete no-go as far as that goes. They're like, oh my god, the real-time stuff? No, we gotta have our turns. So, yeah, uh, utter no-go as far as that goes. Uh, but, uh, the, but uh, conveniently... Uh, do I want to... You know what? Da, da, da. Yeah, let's do this. I probably should have done should have done this before he got his AoE off. Uh, we might not be able to catch up damage-wise here, but whatever. Uh, you know, options are there. As long as they can do something here. Are they going to be able to get these guys away? Yeah, I think they will. They might be able to catch up on damage. Uh, if you if you aren't familiar with uh, Obi's uh, system, by the way, if you end up doing more overall damage over the course of the fight, then you end up causing the other ones to retreat, which is what I'm trying to do here. But yeah, AoEs give you a very massive boost as far as that's concerned. And now I have three attack cards available against the leader. Hello there, Mr. Gilbert. I would normally hire you, but uh, goodbye. <laughs> now we're going for a bit of a speedrun type situation time today, uh, just to kind of start off this discussion thing. But what do you guys think? As far as uh, as far as far a tabletop version of this series, what would you like to see? Like, is uh, like, is it something you'd want to see at all? Is it something that you'd even try? Like, if it came out, or anything like that? Uh, oh, by the way, one, one more thing I should probably mention about the uh, limited version here. 
you may notice uh, you can't actually spam cards as much. Um, it's limited to one per each turn. I'm probably going to finish this off with a sun card. Uh, that won't really help. That will just restore. Yeah, so whatever. We'll just let them attack now. Ah, uh, but yeah. See, Dawnmaster's got nerfed hard in OB64 with that AoE. Yeah. But they did get a bunch of uh, other caster classes, so. That's true, but yeah, Dawnmasters were pretty OP, especially if you started with one. You could absolutely dominate the game with a little, uh, little effort. I'm kind of still tossing up whether I want to go for a second engagement here or try to finish them off with a sun guard. I think, yeah, let's get, let them get one more heal off, and then now. Come on, give me that sun card. They should hopefully have enough to survive it. I think Gilbert should probably get nuked by this. Okay, no, it completely missed him. Never mind. And, yeah, we survived it, but... Yeah, it was close, but not quite. I should probably have had them swarming leader instead. They're probably going to get taken out after this next charge here, but that's fine. Because that's all they really need to do. And uh, if that doesn't work out, I guess we'll go for plan B, which is just hope that they carve through these guys like butter, which they usually do. Which, by the way, uh, if you've ever played hard type, this is usually around the point when it starts getting serious. Uh, but yeah, so... Um, oh! Ah, goodbye, controller. I guess I didn't need you anyway. But any dang ways, what I was trying to get at here is how amazing would it be, uh, specifically why I was uh, referencing uh, OB, um, uh, uh, March of the Black Queen mechanics and all that kind of thing, how amazing would it be if, like, like I was mentioning that whole scenario where, you know, you had your whole squad there, you have five slots for everybody. Like, let's say you have a situation where at the start of the game, you know, every so odd number of turns, everybody has to... Everybody basically just draws cards for different items. So you could work in the uh, the whole item randomization mechanic, uh, you could work in the squad mechanic, you could work in all the different counters and that kind of thing. And probably would need to... I mean, I guess griffins are kind of balanced. They're not terribly difficult. They're not terribly amazing at fighting. But, uh, you know, potentially a lot of good stuff to have there. Like, uh, is, I was telling this story earlier, but uh, most of the folks here weren't here at that time. So, the reason that this uh, that this came up at all, uh, I was thinking, um, it was basically playing some Tactics Ogre while we were playing some uh, Betrayal at House on the Hill. So if you've never played that game, uh, the way that it works is you have, you have usually like four people or so. Uh, they're all going around, they're exploring a house. Every time that they explore a new area, uh, they just basically flip over a tile for that particular floor, they put it down, and on that tile, you know, it says maybe some specific things about what that room does, like say somebody enters into a chapel, and they gain a little bit of sanity from going into that chapel. So each of your characters has four stats, you've got uh, sanity, knowledge, um, and uh, strength, and speed. And so each of the characters that people can start with have some different base number on that, and uh, yeah, looks like uh, looks like the air assault plan just slightly failed because they took that one guy out. So well, you know, whatever. They're gonna go back and camp on this town. We're just gonna go for Plan B of charging straight through the front door, as you occasionally do. It appears everybody has decided to take a nap for some reason. Uh, not sure. Oh, you know what? No. Let's go ahead and buy a couple of flutes. Actually, let's buy a ton of flutes, and then uh, let's go buy some cure stones. Go get like a billion of them. Okay. Will you purchase anything else? Nah, we're good. So we're gonna go ahead and use those. Again, this kind of muting thing on the menu weirds me out, I'll be honest. It, it just feels wrong, like, where's the music? Where's the music? What? I want my sweet sounds back. But anyway, so to continue going on about this game, um, basically, once it's, uh, one, you know, once your, uh, your turn ends, goes on to the next guy, they go and, you know, they roll their events, like, each, each tile will have three types of things they can have on there. Uh, basically, one of them is just an event, like, oh yeah, you know, you get attacked by a random midget with a spear, and yes, that is exactly the one that came up in this particular story. Um, but yeah, it's just some random event. Then you get another one that's an omen, which is just like, some. it's either you get some really OP item, or something really bad happens. Uh, usually you get some kind of benefit out of it, but then there's a little timer that moves up, 
So you get a little thing from 0 to 12, and you get 6 dice. Each of those dice have either 0, 1, or 2 on there. Oh crap, that guy's just OP. <clears throat> okay, so OP. Anyway, so it usually tells you, you know, like, roll for whatever stats, and, uh, you know, just basically carry on with your story, more or less. It's supposed to be kind of like a horror movie-type, eldritch horror-type situation. Other times it's just straight-up Texas Chainsaw Massacre, or in the case of this particular story, uh, Steve the Murder Fairy. And no, I'm not even making that up. That's, um... I, I actually had to go and send this to Vale, because he was the one that originally put out the, um, uh, the Mosquito Challenge. Uh, so, yeah, I had to go and send the uh, the excerpt of the rulebook to him, because it it literally said, like, you take off your human face, you are secretly a murder fairy. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, yes. <laughs> this is what I wanted. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, once a particular type of... Uh, once that omen roll is failed, once you get a particular type of card in a particular type of room, you basically eat... One person's declared the traitor, and then the others are basically put in a little group to cooperate and everybody just reads the rules of the scenario and then acts it out. So in this particular one, I'm pretty sure it was written by a five-year-old uh, on, on a playground somewhere because <laughs> it was the most stupidly unfair thing I've ever seen. Namely, uh, well, a lot of the scenarios are completely unfair. Like, the very first time that I played the thing, my uh, my wife wound up being the traitor, and uh, she basically got a, got a thing that said, okay, you are rapidly aging everybody in the entire house, you know, just roll for how much they age, and I was playing as this old gypsy lady who just died immediately on the very first round, just because they were so old that uh, any uh, any aging forward just immediately killed them. So it was pretty amazing. <clears throat> but anyway, so back to the story at hand. So, you know, started off, ended up, every single turn it seemed I was getting good rolls on something, was getting free stats on my character. And the way it works, you have these little sliders, and you move up, like, one stage or so. Like, it isn't, like, one-to-one -one on stats. It's not like your attack went up from four to five. It's like each character has different growths. It's like, for example, I was playing as the really strong guy, so, like, I think their strength went up from, like, five to seven and then went all the way up to eight. Most characters couldn't get up to eight, and that's why I usually played as that guy. Because in so many of the scenarios, you end up fighting people, and that's usually a might check. Anyway, anyway. So, point being, point being, ended up getting a bunch of stupid stuff. Like, one of them was an item that basically said, okay, you know, like, tag one person, you can instantly teleport to their location at any point. Get another one that's, a, you know, it's a spear. Like, okay, it's just a basic spear, it adds to your rolls. But then, one person uh, to the left of me ends up rolling an event that says they got attacked by a midget with a spear, which for some reason causes my character to get buffed because of the fact that they won that fight. So, so because uh, because my uh, cousin there got friggin' assaulted by a spear midget, I <laughs> ended up getting more stats out of that, um, which uh, then resulted in a in a case where I ended up getting more cards, one of which allowed for well pretty much healing any physical injuries off of a intelligence roll, which my character was practically a genius at this point. Um, another one that basically allowed me to teleport myself or teleport somebody to me. Uh, with pretty surprising regularity. Another one that allowed for adding more dice to anything, including adding more dice to and to uh, one particular uh, ability that more or less said, "Hey, you can to that teleporting or giving yourself a free stat type situation." Let's just say it was stupid. Like you could you can only roll a maximum of eight dice for any given thing, and my guy could do fourteen on most things. So it was dumb. Like it was severely dumb, but really fun. Because, yeah, then, then I'm reading the notes on the scenario, and they're like, okay, so you are completely invincible. Uh, you can also put down traps all over the house. Also, you get to boost all of your stats based off of, you know, however many traps you put out. And also, uh, you basically are just a murder fairy that eats people. So, yes, became Steve the Murder Fairy in uh, Betrayal. If you're curious about how stupid that rule set is, it is Scenario 63 out of the... Uh, uh, out of the, I think it's out of the Widow's Peak expansion. I'm not 100% certain on that. But point being, could you imagine like s that kind of situation, like where you have a tabletop game, but not like the D&D type type thing, like one where you're basically just playing out a single, you know, map or single whatever else, and you have everybody potentially getting super strong, 
but potentially also causing you know a big political upheaval or whatever else by the fact that they ended up getting a lich on the very first map or some crap. Like you could, you have the randomized items element from this. You have your stats going up uh, really fast from the fights. Like you could make a very similar type game, like where you essentially, you know, you know, you essentially are creating a, a situation where you have kind of the ogre battle games and ogre battle settings and everything else, and then you just have different scenarios every time, and you just have little short burst type settings, which, like Betrayal, like Catan, that kind of thing, would be the type of game that would be able to actually become relatively popular because. If you've never played those, by the way, though, the main reason that they end up uh, being popular with folks, like, you know, Seven Wonders, Betrayal, all that kind of thing, it's just because you can sit down with a bunch of your relatives, even if somebody doesn't know it, you can usually just, you know, plow on through it. In Betrayal's case, it's not a balanced game. It's not a balanced game whatsoever. You're not playing for the sake of winning it, you're playing it for the weird stories that happen, which, again, I think would work really well in this particular setting. Because if you're just going and creating, um, uh, you know, just creating all these different scenarios and, you know, maybe you want to chain multiple maps together, that kind of thing. If you're just playing as rando generic grunts and you have the ability, like in March of the Black Queen, to just friggin' find an ogre blade laying in the basement of a chapel one map in, you know, it could work. I think it could really work. But it uh, would be interesting to hear other people's uh, thoughts on that, you know. Be, uh, would be interesting to hear what people think. If anybody feels like typing today, but I guess it's a very lurky kind of day, huh? It's a lurky morning. But, uh, I mean, I know if it came out like that, I would absolutely love it. Uh, so, it's funny, not all... Obviously, not all games translate super well to tabletop. Like, for example, if you've, uh, if you've ever seen or played uh, the, uh, uh, the version of XCOM that, that became a board game... A uh, little bit iffy. Um, I, I gotta say, it's not that it's like a, a bad thing or whatever. They had a decent idea there, but for some reason, um, that they, they put way too much reliance on the companion app as opposed to, let's just say, having a deck of cards for what the AI should do. And the thing is, uh, yeah, that not a lot of folks liked uh, like that particular setup. So, like, it, it got rated very well, but I'll be honest, at you know, an entry price of sixty bucks. I've yet to see anybody just, like, casually go pick it up. Like, for example, Seven Wonders, I mean, it, it comes in at a relatively similar price tag. It's like 45 bucks, give or take. But I know every one of my relatives has one. Because that game is just exactly that kind of thing. You don't... It doesn't require a lot of explanation. You can sit everybody down, and you can just have fun with it. You know, you don't really have to specifically even win to have fun with it. Sometimes you just want to screw people over in a trade deal, you know? <laughs> Like, it's just that kind of situation. Or, uh, you know, something like uh, something like Catan, for example. I've seen some people take that very intensely, and others just play it for fun. Like, I have one relative that, uh, like, he will literally just, like, will practically start a brawl over the rules if you decide to go even slightly different from the official guide that apparently only he's seen because it's different from the one that comes in the box or some crap. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, it's like, nobody's allowed to have any opinions, he's the only one that knows all the rules kind of thing. Like, you're, you're gonna get that, obviously. But, uh, but yeah, similar type situation, though. Sim you have simple rules with potentially complex outcomes, which I think is, you know, Marshall the Black Queen in a nutshell. I think it'd be fantastic for that type situation. But apparently nobody wants to discuss it today, so whatever. Fine. I guess we'll just continue murdering the hell out of Gilbert here. I wonder if Canopus actually says anything. I've never gone this particular route, because somebody told me about the way that you can recruit uh, Canopus and Gilbert uh, from my very first playthrough. So... So, yeah. Actually, no, I think I... Did he tell me, or did, did I just figure it out? Well, whatever, anyway. I've never actually killed off Gilbert here, so... I guess Canopus doesn't say anything. I guess uh, he won't join us either. But we probably got a pretty decent boost from getting that map done pretty quickly. It's funny, this game actually urges you to speedrun it. It's nice, it's nice. So we'll continue on here, still got a reasonably good alignment leader. Actually, interestingly, the other day uh, when I was uh, going through this, I managed to get the, uh, the the ending where you get assassinated, which apparently every OB game has, or, or just every, uh, yeah, I guess every game in the series kind of sort of has. Alright, we got uh, 
But, uh, okay, this is the one with all the ghosts in it, so we'll just send out all the anti-ghost folks. Uh, but yeah, but yeah. So, anyone? Anyone? Let's see. Canopus didn't want him with his sister. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, he, even in, uh, in T.O., he's still trying to get people off his sister. Just lying around, peeling everybody off, like, God dang it, stop getting all over my sister. Like, I know she doesn't, like, appear to want to cover up at any point, but, you know, just whatever. <laughs> like, in this type of scenario in particular, like, the, like, old-timey, everything's super shady, and there's constant wars going on. Yeah, that seems like maybe a situation that maybe want to cover up a little bit, but anyway, anyway, whatever. So, first off, I'm going to want Liz. Uh, she's going to be going out here, probably taking this... I am going to have them run over here, probably. Yeah, let's say... Let's say here-ish. This is usually where a lot of the fights occur. So we're going to have them run out here. I'm uh, going to have uh, the Griffin go out and do their thing, and we probably shouldn't even need anybody else past that. Now, where is... Yeah, let's send out Tina. It's actually Tina that I want out here, not the uh, Griffin squad. Okay, Liz. There we go. Let's get you. Man, I, I love this version. I know I've said it already, but dang it, this version is just so good. Just check it out. You can do this. You can actually go and get your proper overhead. <laughs> and you got your uh, your map right here to tell you what's uh, what. So you got some of your uh, OB64 features. It's nice. I, I really don't know why this uh, version gets considered to be inferior by some folks. But uh, I think it's better. Let's see. OB is perfect for board gaming. The game itself is a board game. So putting it into a games workshop type game would work. Yeah. See, that's what I mean. Like, it would work amazingly. And... I honestly get the sense that Mitsuno has wanted to make a board game for a very long time. You know, especially considering his latest project was Crimson Shroud, which is straight up D&D. &D. Um, I mean, it honestly feels like he <laughs> wanted to uh, make some D&D &D type thing. You've got alignment that's been a system in all the games for basically forever. You've got all of your, um, all of your different mechanics that were clearly made not for balance, but for fun. So, like, if you didn't know about... D&D, for example, there are some abilities in that, like Fireball, for example, that are deliberately made for the purpose of, uh, of being overpowered. Like, th there's a lot of stuff that's just there for the sake of just fun. Now, uh, as far as as far as that game goes, like, I will say I'm not, I don't personally play it, but it's one of these cases where I absolutely love watching other people play it, just because I don't really have a, uh, you know, a any groups or whatever else that would be interested in getting into that kind of thing. Like, I think the most complex thing I can get my usual, you know, uh, relatives and all that uh, together for is going to be Betrayal at House of the Hill. My wife hates it, because she always winds up the traitor, and despite the fact she always ends up winning, it's like, I'm tired of being the traitor, I'm tired of having to get up and leave the room. Hello there, Mr. Setabo. No, not dead yet, actually doing quite well, and getting some pretty decent reputation ops, too. Now, um, been able to get this far, keeping a uh, reputation up all the way. Um, in fact, I probably want to go ahead and uh, deploy a couple of squads here so I don't overlevel my leader too much. So let's go ahead and uh, yeah, get all this going. Because yeah, like if you ended up speeding up the leveling, if you ended up speeding up some of the um, uh, just some of the random stuff here, like you've already got your random uh, random item mechanic and everything else. Like it's it's perfect. It could work perfectly. As a tabletop game, so yeah, but yeah, Mr. Serbo. So we're basically just discussing, um, you know, as far as the OB series, you know, obviously it's going to have a little bit of a hard time making a sequel at this point. But why? There's really no reason that he couldn't just had a uh, tabletop game. Like every one of these games, in their own right, would be a functional rule set and scenario set and everything else for uh, for a board game. Like, specifically, I was using um, Betrayal at House on the Hell as an example, and, you know, it kind of looks like he's wanted to make D&D for a while. Um, it's just, a lot of mechanics are very similar. Like, let's say Tactics over PSP, right? There's so many uh, bits of that one that are clearly just made for role-playing. Like, for example, you take the uh, the Warlock abilities and all that. The fact that they end up... Okay, so they're the super hidden away thing. And then you finally get access to those abilities, and it's like, what what the hell is the point? Like, you, 
you get one where you can only carry 99 worm gems at any given time. This will be relevant in a second. You need your worm gems as kind of ammunition for these casters. So if you run more than one and you regularly use their abilities, you're going to be running out of those very fast because they all take like three to eight in order to be able to use. So you end up burning through them pretty darn quickly. Now, as far as what kind of abilities they get, it's like, you know, well, clearly they must have something good. You've got good attack abilities, like they've got some pretty big AoE smashing abilities, and those are those ones that take like 8 to 12 to actually cast. But you know what? You know what the thing is? Uh, they also have a, like a really, really wide list that is just absolutely worthless. Uh, for example, detect traps. You detect traps in an area around you, you know, standard B&D type stuff. And uh, you know how many maps actually use traps in the entire game? About four. Of the, like, I want to say, like, 300-something maps. <laughs> so they almost never come up. And when they do come up, it's like a simple debuff. Like, oh, you became, you know, 10 to 20% less accurate. Are you, you know, are you glad you spent that consumable to know this? And it's like, it's a thing that's super easy to cure and everything. Uh, let's see. Of the battle at the outside areas, they are books and the year and spider on the board. Exactly! Exactly! Like, he wanted to make a board game. I don't know why he hasn't made a board game. Like, look at Crimson Shroud. It doesn't even have animations. It's straight up just icons on the D&D map. I mean, look look at uh, a lot of the abilities from t from uh, Tactics Ogre PSP. Look at the fact that, like, Tactics Ogre itself was supposed to be a nod to chess. Um, the fact that the OB games are, yeah, they, I mean, they look like real-time Risk. And just, like, it's a mix of Risk and, like, Betrayal of House on the Hill, if I were to describe it to some in terms of mechanics. Just because you've got so much randomization going on, but there's also, you know, a lot of thought behind it. It's just, uh, it would be really, really, really nice. Yeah, it would be really nice for your wizards to have magic missile, like, in all versions, as it never misses. Well, I mean, you kind of, sort of, have that. Uh, you actually had that in, um, uh, in a lot of the Tactics Ogre games. Because what exactly do uh, do each of the uh, overhead abilities have in common? They can't miss. They each of them like it's not magic missile, but uh, I mean, granted, there is a magic missile. It's uh, it's exclusive to fairies, har har, which hilariously almost never miss. But uh, but no, you have um, uh, you have all of your overhead abilities, and yeah, they will be a hundred percent of the time. And that's what I mean. There's like a bunch of stuff that it. It honestly feels like it came from the same kettle of fish as it were. Why exactly am I using that terminology? Hell if I know. I have not wanted or had any... Oh, you know what? Because our neighbors were having a fish fry and it smelled like crap, that's why. Uh, anyway. Anyway, so yeah, that your wizards basically do have that ability, Mr. Fanboymus. But yeah, so as far as other abilities in, uh, in TO that were just made for the sake of role-playing, like a lot of the uh, necromancer abilities... There's really little reason to, to use zombies, especially in that version, uh, just because you're basically giving somebody the ability to be instantly exercised, which a lot of units carry around. Or, you know, you could just bring them back to life. That's a little bit easier. Um, or, for example, like I was saying with those Warlock abilities, you like you give heal craft to somebody. It's like, okay, you made them better at healing, in theory. It gives them, like, four extra healing. It, like, it's kind of worthless. Um, I did find one case where it was somewhat helpful, which is uh, if you ended up using it on a, uh, uh, what's it, do I have a sun card? No. Alright, you know what, you are just going to get rocked, so let's get you out of here. Um, I did see one case where it was potentially useful, which was just on a uh, couple casters that were using Quench, which again is another one of those ones that's just kind of there for the sake of roleplaying more than actually being useful. Because it's an ability, like, Quench and Harvest Dance. They're two different versions of just like, here, let me use a leaf on everybody. And that's about it. Like, they don't really accomplish very much with it. So, anyway. So, yeah, I, I honestly think he's wanted to make a board game, but then just felt it wouldn't work or something. It's just, I don't know. That, that's just the impression that I've had for the longest time. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, if this came out, though, like, if it came out as a board game, and I... Like, I honestly, if it's possible to put it into a Games Workshop kind of thing, it would be awesome to see happen. I actually kind of think that I'm going to have to take a look at that. I wonder, um, 
I wonder how difficult it would be to make this all happen in, uh, in, uh, what's it, uh, Tabletop Simulator. Like, if that happens, I would gladly run games for folks, because that sounds really fun. Also, how long have you been sitting here, Liz? I thought I was going to have you attack that castle a while ago. Also, I kind of need some attack cards, but I don't have any... Eh, whatever. Uh, hang on, I'm going to step away for just a moment here. i got to go check on my kiddo, so just a moment. Hello! Okay. So, I'm back. So, GURPS, you say. Why does that ring a bell, but why does my brain not remember what it is? Um, I think I vaguely remember what it is. And then again, occasionally I think things. Usually my thoughts aren't very smart, so... Who knows? Let's see. But yeah, it would be really, really nice to see this translated. Like, if, um... Oh, you know what? You can actually take out the leader here. I know your frontline fighters aren't going to do so hot, but you can at least snipe him out of the way. Uh, da -da -da, I was getting that here. I was trying to find a thing. Okay, okay. So, Gerbs can run anything and is designed as such. It is the catch-all tabletop game. Well, I will have to see about putting this in there then. Um, is there any investment needed to go pick it up or anything like this? Like I'll be honest, um, most of the time I'm more of a more of a casual tabletop player, just because of uh, you know, just because usually my uh, pool of folks to to play with is going to be you know relatives at family gatherings and all that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, also the archers did not manage to hit him. That sucks. That sucks. I I thought they um I thought they could hit in the back row. I think I'm thinking OB64 though. Murdered through the forest. Well, I mean we technically just kind of flew over it, so. You know, it's uh, it's funny with this game, because um, if you think about it, a lot of it does lend itself to that same type of uh, same type of situation um, with uh, with the different... Ooh. Yeah, you know what? Let's get him out of the way, and let's go ahead and win it immediately. A lot of it does lend itself to that same kind of creative thinking, you know, kind of situation. Uh, what am I talking about? Well, it's, for example, like, uh, for example, I saw, I saw one one game where, say, somebody had a bar of soap. They had just a couple points left over, so they bought a bar of soap. That bar of soap ended up saving them multiple times over the course of their run, just due to creative thinking. And uh, that's exactly what I mean by this. Like, you have a situation here, like this this particular scenario, the Pogrom Forest. Normally, it's a very difficult fight through a giant army of skeletons and crap. And uh, instead, you can just fly over it. <laughs> just, like, just fly to the other end. Who cares? And it works out perfectly. Like it would end up functioning perfectly well as a scenario because, yeah, you you know you can just have people fly over it. And maybe somebody's running it who wants to be a bit more of a douche about it, so they're like, okay, you know, he he put up a bunch of wizards on the mountains to go zap down any flyers. It's like, okay, so then you send your ninjas in. You know, you have somebody start off with a bunch of ninjas and stuff. They went in, they assassinated the wizards, and then they flew in or that kind of thing. Like it it could work, you know, it could really work. 
Okay, first off, let's probably drop a world here so that the Valkyrie has a chance to actually get her ability off. Also, let's go ahead and set them to leader. Bam! Actually, we won anyway, so who cares? No, she has to hit one more time for that to happen. But it's fine. They didn't get nuked by that firewall, so perfect. See, the generic universal role-playing system or groups is able to have role-playing game systems and game setting. Yeah, I'm looking it up right now. Is this, like, is this the latest version, or is there an, a newer one, or anything like that? Because, yeah, you know what? If I'm, I'm going to have to dig into this, because I absolutely want to make um, like uh, March of the Black Queen into that. That sounds amazing. So out of curiosity, if I went ahead and set that up, and maybe went ahead and put it into a tabletop sim or something like that, how many folks here would be interested in uh, giving that a little bit of a try? Like, I will admit, it will take a minute, probably. I'd imagine it would be a little bit of a complicated thing to set up, but, um... You know, you know, might be fun to do. Might be an excuse for folks to get into all that tabletop stuff. Which, uh, yeah, is definitely not as, uh, basement-y as it once was. Though, uh, it certainly doesn't hurt, but, uh... Ah, god dang. It's just fun. This is good fun. Uh, you have tabletop sim? Well, there we go. There's one. We got one! I don't even know what I need to actually port stuff into tables, Tabletop Sim, but I'm pretty sure I can figure it out. I mean, granted, I'm probably the dumbest person to have doing it, but hey, whatever. Whatever works, right? Also, is anyone due for promotions yet? Uh, yeah, we got a Paladin. No, we got another Knight. Oh, wait, you can be a wizard? Uh, whatever. Triple Wizard Squad! Okay, let's go change your formation around. See, this is why I think March of the Black Queen is probably easily, like, one of my favorite games. Like, it's just, I, I love it. I love how simple everything is. It's like, it works so perfectly for this. Uh, yeah, you can be a knight, please. Please, knight. Oh, you're going to be a wizard. Um, uh, you know what? No, you're just fine as a fighter. Um, I guess I could put a different fighter in there. Uh, but then again, double wizards, that could be potentially really useful. Yeah, okay. We'll try it, we'll try it. Let's see, one to get in battle tech, but no one to play with. Um, again, tabletop sim. Works out pretty darn well. Uh, I kind of wish that this had the... You know what, actually, if we put her in the front to replace him, then the caster can probably do a better job from back there. There we go. Let's give uh, this a little bit of a go. See how that goes. Slums of Zenobia. So we should be able to go pick up Dude Guy here. Probably won't be able to. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I forget uh, how exactly you're supposed to be able to pick him up. But again, this is just a speed run right now. Bringing the speed run present March of the Black Queen. <laughs> Probably should have put that in. Okay, so. We don't really want to charge too much. What's, um... Okay, we need a mid-charisma, high alignment. What is your deal, then? You mid-charisma, high alignment, by chance? Uh, yeah, mid-charisma, high alignment. Okay. Good deal. Let's get you over there, dude. Let's get you in there. Let's get the rest of the army in there. And then let's get Liz. Hi, Liz. How would you like to fly over here? It's like, fly her down here, fly her into the back of the castle, as we usually do. And everybody else is just going to march up to the gate and be like, yeah, we're totally going to take out the, that front gate. I don't know what you're talking about. Definitely our plan. Absolutely what we're getting into here. And, but yeah, what do you think uh, some of the other games would end up looking like? It's like, I think, um, like, Let Us Cling Together, specifically the PSP version, would end up looking pretty awesome for a tabletop-type situation as well. And that's lar largely just because of the accessories. Like, I think, obviously, archers would need a bit of a nerf. Though, I will say, I honestly, I feel like uh, archers were probably another one of those cases where they probably just just kind of had them overpowered on purpose. Because if you if you look at all the games, other than, uh, other than um, Knight of Lotus, um, they were all pretty much uh, overpowered throughout the series uh, in different ways. Like, uh... In this one, there weren't necessarily archers, so it doesn't really count. 
But then as soon as you get into uh, Tactics Ogre, the first one, I mean, they're just ridiculous. You just have them run up point blank everything with bows. There's no reason not to have them do that. Um, you have um, the, you know, TOPSP, where they got a bit of a dead zone, but they were still there, just being super oppressive the entire time. Uh, you had um, OV-64, where the archers themselves weren't overpowered, but once you made them into Dianas, they were just basically Rambo. <laughs> like, it... If you've never played OB-64, it is hilarious uh, once uh, Dianas start entering the picture. So you basically have Amazons as your basic archers. You have, um, if they, apparently if they retain their neutrality, as in their uh, neutral alignment, which is pretty easy to do, um, then they become archers. And then if you end up getting a specific fancy bow, which you get in stores later on, and you move move that character up to uh, to a Diana, they suddenly have three attacks. They, they suddenly have ridiculous accuracy. So you could have nine arrows flying out per encounter. Um, usually doing about as much damage as a frontline fighter. So yeah, they just turn into Rambo at that point. It's amazing. And honestly, I think that's the feeling they were going for with uh, TOPSB. Because, like, I, I mentioned this several times, but I've always felt that it was super weird how, you know, it, there was so much polish, but then at the same time there was so much stuff that was clearly imbalanced. And... Uh, quick ch coffee chug, right? Oh yeah, so, like, they had a bunch of really obvious imbalances, like, the stuff that there's no way anybody could have missed. Like, the archer thing, I could kind of understand it, except for the fact that, yeah, that it's just like, there's no way that they didn't test it up till mid-game or something. And so, like, lately I've been kind of appreciating them as kind of a intended, just overpowered thing, you know? Like, maybe they just loved having overpowered archers. So, you know, it all kind of depends on how you want to see it, I suppose. But uh, that's, uh, that's kind of my two cents on the matter. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, my, my leader got sent backwards. Whoops. So I could see that, see that being pretty darn fun. But yeah, that... The reason that I mentioned that there should probably be some limitations on archers, though, if, if it was a tabletop type scenario, there's really no reason for everybody not to be a crossbow archer. So it would need to be a little bit different. But um, I'd imagine, you know, having a sort of item randomization type system, maybe, um, I don't know, maybe some points spent on prep time beforehand. Like, it would be pretty awesome to have the option for, like, okay, you start off as a basic fighter, but you have the ability to start off with a city ring or something like that, you know? You just have the ability to teleport, or the ability to fly, or maybe, um, you know, at at attach a really cheap point cost to stuff like, uh, like a cloud walk ring or something like that, so you can hover over traps or whatever else. Um, you know, probably following uh, one vision's balance on the trap wouldn't be a bad idea. Because, uh, yeah, if, you, if you've never played One Vision, uh, basically they made the traps do 50% damage plus an actual important debuff, <laughs> rather than just like, oh, they got 10% accuracy loss. Take that. <laughs> you spent all that time setting up a trap, letting yourself get hit in order to set up that trap, and the best you got is a slight accuracy debuff? Like, really? <laughs> That's what I mean. There was a lot of stuff in there that seemed like it was only for the sake of role-playing rather than actual useful stuff. I mean, even, um, like, you had, uh, I, I love to make fun of this all the time, but there was one ability from, uh, from the oracles that, that literally was just like, you can look at the weather, but if you hit square and to the right, you could always look at the weather, but now you can do it with an ability. <laughs> so that was always fun, but anyway, like, it's literally just there because they can scan the weather, they're an oracle, but it's like, you had the little icon that said, hey, fire is powerful today the entire time, so there was never a point to actually have it. Uh, but anyway, anyway. So, again, I, I legitimately think Mitsuno wanted to make a uh, friggin' uh, friggin' tabletop game forever. I just thought they wouldn't sell or something. Probably. I mean, general sense that I get a lot of the time uh, when, uh, when reading over interviews and stuff like that. Oh. Well, thank you, kiddo. Got a, got a box. Oh, yeah. That usefulness. Oh no. Okay, I'll hang on to it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, or not. Okay, apparently I'm not allowed to hang on to the box anymore. <laughs> it's like, here, go take this box. And it's like a, a garbage box, so I chucked it in a garbage can. 
It's like, oh no, grabs it, hugs it, walks away. I think I accidentally insulted her. Oh, uh, <laughs> or no, she's all smiling. Anyway, anyway. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna try that GURPS thing. Um, so we're gonna try that out, see how that goes. I think it would be a, a really fun thing to have March of the Black Queen in that, and maybe apply a similar rule set to like Luck or something like that. And again, for all the new folks coming in, if you've never played Limited Edition March of the Black Queen, this is what this one is. As you can see, it runs much faster. All the uh, animations and everything look nicer. Like, this is the one. Why they never re-released this on PSN, I don't know. Like, I would buy this in a heartbeat if it came out on PSN. Uh, I've, again, I've seen folks complain about the cockatrices. Just put them in the front row. Like, they're honestly... This type of uh, setup right here with the... the uh, just one unit and then two cockatrices. It's actually one that I've been uh, running in my last uh, last playthrough of this. And yeah, it's like 15, 20, whatever percent for them to petrify. Doesn't matter. They do like 50 and then they remove that unit from the entire fight. Plus, I think their speed got boosted. So they basically always attack first. So there's a chance for them to just have instant initiative to go take out somebody and do a ton of damage from the very start of the fight. 50% was a bit high on that. So... Anyway, so, honestly, I think it, it was a good change on the cockatrices, but uh, it's obviously it's going to be up to personal opinion on that one. Any darn ways, so yeah. We've almost, oh yeah, and you get this nifty overhead map and everything. It's, it's cool, it's such a good version. Like, this is, it's just the best port. As far as I'm concerned, it is hands down the best way to play this game. Um, so yeah, so yeah. Other than that, uh, so I will point out, by the way, for anyone that uh, was uh, waiting for that section, uh, for all of the uh, the lore stuff and everything else, I will be doing separate videos on that, because a lot more requests came in than I was actually expecting. I, I thought it would be like maybe three, four people asking for stuff as usual, but it was like 30 plus requests, and uh, yeah, that's going to take a minute, so I was <laughs> so basically... Uh, I'm going to be doing separate stuff to address each of those, so that, those will be coming out over time. Um, additionally, for anyone that was asking for the information on all the diff you know, version differences and everything else as an article, uh, that will be, uh, I'll be posting that up as soon as it's done, which again will hopefully be today at some point. So, uh, so there's that. Now, quick question, Mr. Serbo, if you're still here. As far as GURPS is concerned, is there anything to know going into it? Like, anything particular to prepare for. Ooh, Fallout was supposed to use GURPS. Right! That's where I've heard of it from before. Right, 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 right. Okay, yes, yes, yes. I know exactly what it is now. Because, yeah, there was an old uh, old interview um, specific when specifically talking about that. Um, interestingly, by the way, uh, speaking of uh, Fallout board games, uh, has anyone here played the uh, the newer one? Like, the, uh, the one that they made for the, the three New Vegas and four scenarios? Because it actually was surprisingly good. Um, it, it was literally just called Fallout Board Game, which was really confusing because they also had Fallout Monopoly, they had Fallout uh, Risk, they had Fallout everything. So, like for example, when I had, when I had mentioned at one point, like, hey, you know, I know what I want for Christmas, and I was pointing out that thing, they're like, uh, there's like 20 Fallout Board Games. Which <laughs> one do you mean? Um, so yeah. Uh, but it was interesting, like, they had a really nice way that they condensed down the core experience of a lot of the games and essentially turned it into a board game. Which, I can, um, I mean, gonna try it with the whole GURPS thing, but I just think it it's just very similar with this. Like, so for example, you had a set, you know, a set amount of characters, you had uh, pre-made characters. Uh, you couldn't really do custom stuff in that one, which, okay, fair enough. Um, honestly, I feel like a lot of the times when they have pre-made characters in the box, it really helps speed up the experience, especially for, um, you know, for folks that are just kind of coming in and want to play a game, they don't really want to go into it too much. Um, that's kind of why I was, uh, why I was referencing the trail there, because it has that nice mix of randomizing all of your different elements of the game, uh, while also, uh, giving you, like, a good amount of pre-made characters. Like, each person, uh, typically we would play two rounds of the thing. Uh, but each person, for example, just picks uh, one of the tiles and has two people on there, and usually they're going to be relative opposites of each other. Like, you've got the scientist and the priest who look really similar, or you've got the really strong guy and the really cracked-out-looking fast guy. You know, you've basically just got two characters at the end of the first game, you just flip it over, you've got another one that's 
you know, you're familiar with the playstyle of the first one, so here's another one that specializes in different stats or something like that. And they've all got different growths and all that kind of thing, so, it you know, it works pretty darn well. Like, it it ends up functioning very, very well if we're just a pick-up-and-go kind of game, and you're just playing for the sake of creating scenarios rather than being fair. And again, this is something you see all the time in Ogre Battle games. There's a bunch of stuff that's blatantly overpowered or underpowered, but it's there for the sake of role-playing type stuff. And, uh... The funny part is, um, despite the fact that it tends to come up, people do tend to do stuff, and actually just any creatures on Earth, quite frankly, uh, tend to do stuff for just the sake of doing it sometimes, rather than uh, rather than any actual logic. Um, to go on a little bit of a tangent here, for example, there was a uh, there was a case uh, a while ago where this guy was studying behaviors of mice, and so he kept giving them more or less perfect scenarios, and I forget the guy's name at this point. But he kept giving them a perfect situation where they had enough room to expand, they had infinite food, infinite water, just like everything was built, tailor-built for them, and they still wound up in a situation where once they got to a certain population, everything just kind of bleh, more or less collapsed in on itself. A bunch of them started attacking each other for no reason. They would just form up in, like, roving murder bang, uh, uh, gangs and stuff like that. And, uh, and yeah, you had some that apparently just close themselves off from everybody else, refuse to have any more little mice babies or whatever else, and uh, and just kind of came up with a situation where they would just sit there and they would groom, groom themselves all day. So, point being, point being, just, you know, there's really no reason for everything to be per perfectly balanced all the time, and oftentimes it's more fun to have imbalance in games. How does that uh, relate to it? Just because life isn't logical. There we go. Done deal. Now that I've fully scared everybody off, um, what I was trying to get at in the first place was with uh, with Lucked uh, being a board game, right? Is how many accessories and things like that are there in that game with a bunch of random side effects that honestly weren't terribly useful uh, for, the, for the sake of a normal playthrough? Like, for example, having false strike on a pair of boots or something like that uh, with, a, like, Earth and Earth and Greaves and things like that. Or, for example... Just having a basic light buff on a weapon that's really severely endgame on other classes that would have been able to use it. You know, just uh, been able to use it innately and all that kind of thing. Also, you know what? This chick needs to hurry up and get the hell over their capital because our entire army is getting slaughtered here. Do yeah, I'm actually gonna have to start retreating soon. They didn't even make it to that town. Um, but whatever, whatever. So, it'll be interesting to see how that goes. I, I'd like to start with March of the Black Queen for uh, trying out this uh, GURPS thing. And then if that goes well, I'd like to see how uh, Luft would handle that as well. So, you know, it would be interesting. We'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. And, uh, yeah. So, I, I wouldn't, again, give a little bit of time for setting that up. But if anybody's interested, I'll uh, once it's actually put together, I'll put together like a little sign-up type thing. And we can uh, kind of organize when it would be. Uh, so it would be around the normal times that I'm usually available. But I think it might be fun. So I will say there will if the, if there's a, a thing for writing uh, specific scenarios, I'm gonna have to write in what happened to me the very first time I played through uh, March of the Black Queen because the very first time I played through, I found the frickin' ogre blade in the basement of a church very early on in the game. And they're just like, oh yeah, take this thing. We don't really need it. It's like, we have a sword of pure evil laying in our basement. Just, uh, you know, usual church type stuff. Just uh, thought it might be nice. You know, thought you might make some use of it. You know, we didn't, I mean, we were just using it to cut butter, but uh, whatever. I mean, the stupid things like crackling with pure evil all over the place, so it's a little bit hard to actually get it to cut through anything. I mean, we tried to cut some bread and it just caught fire and then melted into a pool of blood, so we're not sure what to, uh, what to do with that situation. Uh, yeah, I think you're probably good enough to retreat here. Yeah, I think Mr. Potato's squad is a little bit ruined right now. Oh, oh well. Bad. I think probably we'll, um... We'll, we'll get to start wrapping this up after, uh... After this a little bit here. Because I do have to go get going on other things today. But, uh, yeah, just wanted to have that first discussion there. See how, uh, how folks thought of different things. Um, and yeah, definitely sounds like a fun thing uh, going forward with that uh, GURPS type situation. So, that'll be fun. That'll be all nifty-like. 
He said, originally I was thinking, hey, you know, maybe we'd just make a petition and they'll make one. And again, seeing as how crazy unlikely that is, maybe we can possibly get it to bleed into more popular board games or something. Maybe. Maybe get it a little bit popular. Is it possible? Uh, the odds are fairly low, but it's worth a try. You know what? Whatever. At least it'll be fun for us. Why not? Um, but yeah, as far as an official version, that would be downright amazing. Uh, I should probably go back uh, a, a step here. Uh, what I was talking about uh, with uh, Fallout being successfully made into a board game. So the way that they did it, uh, they basically had all of your pre-made characters. I realize that I went on way too much of a tangent here. Uh, but yeah, so they had all their pre-made characters, and all of them had some limitations. So like, for example, you had your uh, your Brotherhood of Steel guy who started off with the ability to wear and a set of uh, power armor, for example, and then pretty much nothing else going for it. Or you had another one that was this random lady that started off with a lead pipe as a weapon, but had no actual stats to use it. Or you had another one that, uh, I think the other one just started off with some extra charisma or something. And the deal was that instead of investing piles and piles of stats, it was literally just you had a little check mark for each of your stats, and then you either had that stat or you didn't. So it ended up uh, working pretty well for a you know, quick uh, pick-up-and-play type scenario where you had just a bunch of events all over the map, and they basically said, like, oh, you have to go here to do this thing for this guy or something. So they give you an objective. They're, they're sort of randomized quests, but not really. And then you had like encounters all over the map, and you had your um, you had a an actual armor system, like it actually had a functional armor uh, armor system, which I was really surprised by because this came out as a result of Fallout 4 and had bits of it in there, but it used an armor system just like New Vegas did. So, oh by the way, Petrify never hits, huh? Yeah, that's not devastating or anything. That guy is completely out of the fight, and he ended up uh, hitting him really super hard. Yeah, that's totally worthless, man. Who would ever want that? <laughs> like, it isn't super accurate, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think uh, cockatrices are a bit more balanced in this version. But uh, anyway, so if you've never played it, I would highly recommend that one as well. I mean, like I said, personally, I think Betrayal is the easiest to get into. But that's all as they are. Oh, by the way, if you've uh, never played OB, if you want to really go for, uh, for all the good alignments and everything else, the... Honestly, this is the method that I think is probably the easiest, uh, where you, you kind of just you pick some towns that are close by, you find ones that roughly match up with the alignment and uh, charisma of what they're looking for. So you send one squad out there, and then you send everybody else in a massive bum rush. I mean, hopefully you'll claim that town, hopefully you'll get a little bit of reputation up for it. And then uh, uh, from there going forward, you just send like a little uh, Griffin squad out there with a bunch of attack cards to be able to go curb stomp their capital. So it's useful stuff. And uh, yeah, hang on. I will be right back once again. Just a moment. All right, and back. So, by the way, Mr. Evan, uh, Noah's uh, asking, uh, well, I, I know you mentioned it a while ago. What is 07? What, what's, uh, what you talking about over there? 
Oh, by the way, uh, like I was saying earlier, um, with uh, with Samurai being buffed in this version, yeah, Sonic Strike is actually good now. <laughs> so, so yeah, if you've ever played the SNES version, it's like, hey, why, what is the actual point of Sonic Strike? It never seems to do anything. Because, yeah, it was basically just a basic attack, but they got hurt for using it. So in this case, yeah, it's like twice as strong. Um, so yeah, it's nice. It's nice. And eventually that Griffin squad will get there. You know, they're they're taking their sweet time. They're, I mean, they're kind of, uh... I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're doing. They're just kind of chuckling about not getting where they need to go. So yeah, if you're doing this method, by the way, um... Oh, salute. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Fair enough, but yeah, so... Again, I'll, I'll try to put that together in between the billion other projects that I keep signing up for. <laughs> I don't know why, That's I've always had a bad habit of taking on way more projects than I should, and then usually by some friggin' miracle accomplishing most of it. So, yeah. You, by some miracle, I mean usually, like, just foregoing sleep for months at a time. And, uh, yeah. Oh, hey, child, what you got there? Yeah. Got exactly something. I'm not allowed to see what it... Oh, yeah, that's a sweet crumpled up piece of paper you got there. Oh, man, that thing's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Um, appreciate it. Oh, one sec. Yeah, it would have been nice to be able to get to that town over there, because uh, it would have given us another attack card, potentially. This is kind of the main downfall of this scenario. You occasionally have to take one of your maps just to kind of go and completely curb stomp everybody that's there. So usually you want to do like the ghost maps or any of the maps with low alignment units usually, because you can kind of balance out. Uh, but yeah. Uh, as long as we keep losing units, we're probably going to wind up relatively low level team here. Alright, hang on. Quick pause. Seriously, Liz, what is taking you so dang long here? Like, how long does it take for you to fly over the dang wall? Oh! One thing I should mention that I will definitely make a separate video on at some point. You know what? You know how many times I was laughing at this series? Like, oh, ha ha, look, they've got all these castle walls and nobody ever uses them. I was complete numb nuts because I never even realized that they completely explained that in the very first game of the series, which is technically the fifth, but whatever. You know why nobody ever friggin' uh, worries about walls or getting through them or just doing the standard fantasy thing of just teleporting to the other side of the wall? Because they can do that. <laughs> it's an actual mechanic in March of the Black Queen. Like, y y everybody, every army, no matter what you do, has at least two griffins. So you're always going to have flying units. You're always going to have flying mounts, and you're going to have flying people. You, on top of that, you have uh, fairies as well, which also count as low sky. You've got gremlins as well. Basically, any of your flying units are able to just completely bypass walls with no issues whatsoever. Um, so yeah, this is a regular series thing. Like I guess they just kind of assumed it was a given going forward. Uh, but yeah, like in, in this one, for example, you do need flying units to clear over walls. So yeah, they just fly on the other side, and that's it. And in every game... Uh, let me see. Let, let me double-check on this, but... Let's see. And I, I do believe that they actually address the walls in every game in their own way. Like, uh, in, um, in no particular order. So March of the Black Queen, they've got the flying units. And uh, let us cling together. They start you off with Canopus. And there's no way you're getting rid of Canopus, because dude's awesome. So, you've got that. Uh, you've... Uh, Let's see, or you can buy termites. Yeah, true, termites too. I totally forgot about that. You can destroy walls with termites. That's an actual thing. Um, you can destroy their entire, like, probably decades-long construction project with a single box of termites. <laughs> it's amazing. God, I love this game. Um, anyway, anyway, so... Today I've got that. You know what, actually, I'll tell you what, I need you to make a beeline over here. They're obviously defending the hell out of that town. Um, we need at least one attack card, and I need to go use some ethereal flutes, which honestly, by the way, I can't not read those as ethereal skin flutes. I don't know why. I don't know what's wrong with the dirty part of my brain, but it's just like every time I read that, it, that's exactly what it comes up as. Anyway, so yeah, they, they address it in this one, and, uh, and let us clean together. Yeah, they start you off with Canopus, so 
you're going to have a fl at least one flying unit, and you're probably going to recruit more over the course of the game. And, um, let's see, in OB-64, uh, I believe they do start you, I, I think they do give you some griffins. Like, you know, running into griffins and running into uh, other flying-type units, that's like, uh, Hawkmen and griffins are on the road all the time, so you have more than ample opportunity to hire one. Um, and, um, at, not to mention, usually, uh, usually they just come out to fight you. So you don't necessarily... I mean, I guess story-wise, it's just kind of assumed you pick one up. In uh, Knight of Lotus, uh, usually he's let in. Uh, so, for example, in... Um, it's funny that they even mention it in each of those cases. Like, for example, you arrive at Tremido, and they want to trap him in there, so he's like, oh, crap, they just opened the gate. What's that all about? Um, and then uh, later on, when you go to the castle, you, uh, you have a case where it's either Margaret that lets you in or, um, uh, or the, uh, the twins is they also want to uh, basically just drag him in there. So they have an invested reason to actually have him inside. So, so yeah. Uh, for, I mean, TOPSP, it's going to be the same thing as uh, original Lux, because, you know, Canopus, except now he's even more indestructible. So there's that. Um, what am I missing here? Uh, I, I don't know how it would go in Prince of Zenobia, but I'm assuming probably the same way. Uh, I'm assuming they probably also start you off with Griffins. Uh, let's see, can this squad break through? Can't start off, um, start off this diet thing today. I gotta say, fat-free cheddar sucks. Like, I've never tasted such awful cheese, but... You know, you wash it down with some good coffee, it tastes slightly less like shoe leather. So there's that. Uh, but yeah, trying to... Uh, trying this new uh, diet type situation. Gonna be an interesting few months. Uh, yeah, you guys got absolutely ruined by that squad. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, yeah, th it's probably time to let them win a few fights, because, oh wow. <laughs> um, what I, yeah, we definitely need to take some towns here just for the sake of being able to get their, uh, their stuff up a little bit. So for one thing, okay, get another ethereal flute. Get you up, take this uh, town right here. Rather take this thing. Yeah, fat-free cheese. I know, I know. What what is that? <laughs> exactly. It's like a travesty in a bag. <laughs> but what can you do? You know. Uh, okay, bring in the temple. Uh, we probably could have sent people to the left. Draw card. Okay, strength is all right. Like that's workable. Awesome, the fall coast. Uh, all right, now check the temple, and yeah, this is another reason why I was saying it would work perfectly for tabletop. See, so yeah, you can just revive anybody as long as you have cash. And it's interesting because there was a apparently a book series that was put together a while ago that Mr. Vale was telling me about, in which uh, it was basically somebody trying to be an assassin in this type of situation, like wherein if as long as somebody has some resources or some friends. They're able to go and just revive somebody at any given point. Which, if you think about it, the mechanics of this series as a whole, each one of them taken individually, would lead to some pretty interesting crap. Like, the fact that more or less the life cycle has an extra step, that instead of just dying in a lot of cases, they usually zombify. <laughs> so in some cases somebody dies, other cases they zombify. Um, but yeah, it's... It's just really cool. It's just really cool. There's just... So many little things that it's it's just a wonder that they didn't do more with it. Because yeah, if you never noticed, yeah, the, the, it's just a pretty regular series thing. Where they're like, okay, you know, we um, kind of just brought them back as zombies, just so you know. And and yeah, in um, uh, what's it? Uh, da, 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 da. In uh, in OB64, like they overtly make it a mechanic that there's a chance after every fight for somebody to zombify. Uh, but they. You know, other than that, they're just kind of carrying or carrying them around in boxes or whatever, and then they just bring them over to a temple and they're like, "Hey, so witch lady, you uh, can you just go ahead and mass revive? I mean, we got money for you, so there we go." So that'd be kind of interesting as far as that goes. You've got your usual revival mechanics. I mean, like, there's just so much stuff, so many shenanigans that could be potentially had. So, so yeah. At, at this point, by the way, um, we're basically just kind of wrapping up. So. Uh, to the new folks that just came in here, we're uh, 
going to be finishing up pretty soon here. Just wanted to try and finish off this map just for the hell of it. I'm um, currently got a little bit blocked by the fact that uh, my uh, Griffin squad got kicked in the face. So that's a little bit of an issue. Um, in fact, I just want to have them go fly somewhere to see if they can get a little bit of help, maybe. Actually, you know what? You know what we're going to have them do? Have them over here go finish off some leaderless squads. Get a couple of levels on them. That seems like an idea. Seems like a pretty good idea, because, yeah, it's just a couple squads that are actually defending it all. Man, so it's been weird. Lately, I uh, had, um, had a neighbor that's been putting all kinds of angry messages all over the place. Because somebody has been forgetting to pick up after their dog. Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm using the term forgetting nicely here, because I'm pretty sure they're just being douchey about it. But yeah, they're like they're just leaving the stuff all over the place. Although it's weird when somebody responds with douchiness with more douchiness, so there's just like a bunch of vulgar signs being pasted all over the entrance to the building and all that. It's just like, really, do you, do you need to introduce my kids to all manner of new cuss words? Is this absolutely necessary? Like, just they're a douche. It sucks. You display that you have bags at your disposal, so just go pick it up. Um, as in, they started posting uh, posting bags all over the place uh, for that person to pick up and go pick up after their dog. And what bothers me is I'm pretty sure they think it's us, too, because, uh, I mean, on multiple occasions, I've seen bags that look very similar chucked over our fence. Like, very, very, very similar. Just chucked over it, just chucked into our balcony. Like, I'm pretty sure chuck and poo is a crime, so... Anyway... Yeah, I'm just going off on tangents, tangents at this point. So, let's see, GURPS. Do I have to... Do I do to get this thing? Alright. GURPS, 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 GURPS. Uh, ooh. Apparently Wikipedia is doing another, uh, another drive. Keep themselves running. Seems like a pretty regular thing here. Uh, let's see... So it's kind of weird that apparently the last version of GURPS was 2004. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, uh... It didn't evolve into anything else, did it? Like, is that actually the most recent version? It seems like, let's see... When did they come out here? It looks like 1986, 1988, and then 2004, yeah. I mean, I guess they waited, like, 16 years between those two versions. I hmm. wonder what kind of big change you actually need in order to, uh, to have a new version 16 years later. It's not the longest they've ever waited, I suppose. Okay, come on, Liz. You can do the thing with the winning. Worst case scenario, I'll have them retreat. Do a little bit of healing, all that kind of thing. Alright, just finish them off. That is some very uninspiring damage. Actually, the only reason that I don't have only the Griffin out in front here is because I really don't want him to be taking all the damage. Now, come on, Mr. Mr. Dude Guy in the back. Come on, zapify them. Or they're weak to fire for some reason. Yeah, that makes sense. Seems legit. Why not? Why wouldn't they be weak to fire? It's kind of interesting that the strength card increases defense rather than attack. But whatever. Oh, they didn't even finish off one of them, really. Come on. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Dude, you suck. <laughs> wow. That's, uh, that's some pretty disappointing performance right there. Alright, anyway. Let's uh, go ahead and use more of them stones. Get a little bit of healing done. All that kind of thing. Yeah, so much for, uh, for blitzing the capital here. As useful as that would have been. But what I probably can do is equip some of these items on there. Got a sweet helmet. Yeah, let's give that to you. Any intelligence boost out of that? Not really. And then fire shield. Let's go ahead and give that to you. Get your fire abilities up a little bit. Maybe you'll do a little bit better next time. There we go. Let's do this thing. As the entire rest of the army gets absolutely decimated.
Yeah, I you know what? I absolutely love this particular map. Just because it's... I don't know. It's very unusual for a lot of strategy games to just come in with a map this early. Where they're like, okay, we're just going to completely beat you in the face. <laughs> right now. Like, we're not even... We're not even going to pretend about that. Just like... This scenario is meant to ruin you. There you go, he gets a little bit nuked. Come on, 16. Yes! You finished him. Perfect. It's funny how uh, strong is actually arguably the best way to have everybody set in this one. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. <laughs> we were talking about termites. Get by walls. <laughs> okay, so yeah, now everybody can just bum rush the city because, yeah, the walls are gone. Ah, uh, perfect. Perfect. Man. I love. I just love how that's a mechanic. Like, there's, you just have termites in a box that cause an earthquake that breaks walls. Ah, it's so good. It's so good. Man, everything about this game is just so good. <sighs> yeah, you guys are not going to be winning this one. I'll see you that much right away. You're just going to miss immediately. The bolt got your damage missed. Yeah, there we go. We can retreat safely at this point. No, I want the animations. They look pretty darn nifty. Actually, it's interesting how with uh, some of the promotions, even when there's upgraded classes, they change them very slightly in this one uh, in order to give them a little bit more oomph. Like the paladins, instead of just attacking three times, they have this like little extra step to their movement where, where they'll just like literally take a step forward for their second slash. It looks nice. Like it's it's such a subtle change. It's really good. See, probably a Looney Tunes reference. Hang on, wait, what? Which thing? Oh, with the termites. Yeah, very well could be. Oh, actually, another interesting thing. Uh, so, uh, there was a, a a part I was planning to put out. I don't know. I haven't decided when yet. Um, but I wanted to call it like over battle musical journey because there's so many parts. The, he, we already know for a fact that uh, that uh, Queen 2, as well as a bunch of other songs, inspired this series. However, I'm pretty sure there's a lot more uh, than uh, than what actually got mentioned there. Like, for example, look at um, uh, look at the Black Queen in this game. Look at Pat Benatar. Then listen to the song Invincible, and tell me that there isn't a link there. Like. Literally, the song is is just uh, let's see how what were the lines? Uh, let's see, can't afford to be innocent. Uh, stand up and face the ending. It's a do or die situation. We will be invincible. That's like the the main the main line of the song. It's like, dude, that sounds exactly like her entire character arc. Like they're just basically being the bad guy because they're afraid of being invaded. So they're trying to become crazy invincible and everything. Which yeah, I mean, it's taken at face value rather than what the song is actually trying to say. But still, you know, like, still, like, it just fits so well, you know? But there's there's so many parts throughout the series, it's like, yeah, I could, I could totally see it being, you know, part of this song or another. Like, surprisingly, um, there were many parts, and I don't think he actually listens to it, but there were many parts of, uh, like, the T.O.P.S.P. expansions that I could very well see as, uh, oh, crap, they're doing nothing to these guys. Uh, that I could very easily see as uh, Blind Guardian references. But uh, I'm, I'm going to go more into that when I actually write the article about it. But um, either way, uh, there's just a bunch of old songs that I'm pretty darn sure were, uh, were possibly at least at face value inspirations for different stuff. Uh, but, uh, but yeah. Oh, 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 oh. So uh, another funny thing, speaking of inspirations for different stuff. Since this this actually came up during the um, uh, I was putting together the article on finishers for uh, for the One Vision mod, so it's funny because I had to ask specifically on um, on one of the abilities because uh, there's uh, the final axe finisher is called Infinity and it basically just like nukes everything with bubbles, and I had to go out and ask like is this by chance an Infinity War reference because it's like suddenly. The infinity move kills everything with bubbles, like that. Was, and it turns out it was just a coincidence, because apparently he hasn't seen the movie. But still, the uh, I just thought it was uh, I just thought it was really cool how that lined up. So, either way, that'll be uh, that'll be in the guide when it gets out there. <laughs>
eventually. I know, that one's been taking forever, but eventually it'll be out. It takes a really long time, okay? Like, it's literally, I'm going through the entire thing and trying to friggin' freeze frame every single finisher to try and make it look nice. On top of writing the thing, on top of re-editing it, on top of doing, like, three separate run-throughs to make sure grammar is at least decent. Oh, <laughs> on top of, uh, on top of going through and then testing whether formatting is okay for at least some different things. Like, it's, it's always gonna look like crap on phones, just so you know. It's just... It's it's kind of a bummer, but yeah, that, I was using WordPress for all that, so it's always going to look like crap on phones. Um, and just because I'm not, you know, setting it up for phones or anything. Uh, but anyway, so that'll be, again, hopefully out today. Because I think all I have left, let's see, axes, I almost finished. The writing for all of it is finished. I think, let's see, cudgels, whips, I did books. I want to say cudgels, whips, and there's something else. And then that's just for the for the melee section of it. So the range stuff will be uh, will be a whole separate thing. Anyway, anyway, eventually we'll beat this map, and then that'll be the end, the end of this little discussion here. And uh, who knows? You know, maybe the the GURPS thing will uh, potentially get more interest going in the series and all that. I'd absolutely love for that to happen. Like, literally anything that gets more interested in the series, I'm, I'm all game for. Alright, let's do this real quick. Hang on, I need to go check on something real quick, because for some reason... Oh. Weird, okay. Never mind, the checking has proceeded on its own. I was trying to figure out what my kiddo was up to. She's like... Yelling, I guess she's trying to develop psychic powers. It's like over there, yelling at, uh, yelling at a water bottle to come over to her until she finally just walked over and picked it up. <laughs> I think we all had that moment as kids. She's like, "Quick, I'm telekinetic now. I, I want freaking powers." I mean, I'm pretty sure every kid, when uh, reading through Harry Potter for the very first time, had that moment where they were secretly like, "Yeah, I got this stick. Let's go. Uh, let's go try some of these incantations out. Huh? Nobody's got to see this." Everyone did it. Don't even say you didn't, because you know you did. <laughs> Everyone was a massive nerd as a kid, as it should be. You know what? If it's possible, I'm pretty sure everybody would be a massive nerd forever. Because uh, why not, you know? It just makes everything more fun. Yeah, you guys are totally winning this one, aren't you? Man. Getting absolutely curb stomped. Or should I say, uh, whipped... Though I will say, this whipping is a lot less embarrassing than the one that happened in OB64. So there was one map in that one where it's just like four old men with whips, and that is their entire squad. And they completely ruined like five of my teams. <laughs> just like just like roving gimp squad, completely destroying everyone. That's pretty great. That's pretty great. Uh, yeah, they're, at this point, they're kind of just doing whatever damage they can, to be totally frank. They're gonna probably die here, yeah. Um, but yeah, th these guys were never meant to win, and uh, that's that's part of the strategy. Like usually, usually, you know, you can get your Griffin squad in a little bit better than how it went here. In fact, I almost wonder if it's maybe better. Like the ideal, really, is if you can get uh, like a couple doll mages and uh, and a healer. So you get like a cockatrice in front, a couple doll mages. Uh, get a, uh, a shaman in the back and all that kind of thing, and just completely destroy everything with AoE. It is really good. It is really strong, especially against living things. Anyway, yeah, I was, uh... Oh, yeah, I was, was recently watching through this, um, through this run-through of, um... Uh, this, uh, speedrun, rather, of, uh, the, uh... What's it? The, not the director's guide. I think it was a DualShock or something like that. Of the original, uh, Resident Evil. And, um, and yeah, it was the, like, the one with the really weird music, as in they had one with a guy that later turned out to be a fraud, apparently, um, that he apparently stole the music from somebody else. Uh, but yeah, apparently they had to go back and redo the entire, uh, redo every, uh, release of that game really well after it came out, like, as in apparently it was only a few months ago when it was actually revealed. And, uh, yeah, I don't really know why anybody would steal the music that he did, because it sucks. Like, it's legitimately garbage, so I don't really know why he did that. 
but whatever, I guess he wanted to, I guess, throw all of his career away for nothing. Uh, if you've never played that version, by the way, um, I don't remember his name off the top of my head, but it's just like, instead of the usual scary music you see uh, in uh, in Resident Evil and all that, it's just like a lot of just like just weird random noises. Um, not sure what crackhead thought that that's music, but hey, I mean, somebody must have. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the version they went with. Although to be fair, they kind of went with a lot of stuff that was maybe questionable. Alrighty, so there we go, there's at least one of the roving gimp squad gone, but I'm pretty sure this is going to be a bit of a wash, yeah, there we go. At least they get some levels, the cleric and her hell beast. I have to say, one of my favorite moments is still, still, still in OB64 right now. Oh, and Lover's Card. Yes! Yeah, Lover's Card is amazing. You get reputation up, and you also get a card that turns everybody against their leader. Good timing. The Beast King? Sure. Oh, Termite's gonna strike castle walls, you don't say. I mean, if you look left, you'll basically see the Termite's strike the walls. Oh, hello! Alrighty, hand him back. So yeah, he gave them to some monk, and he termited the hell out of everything. I think that monk actually only gives you the termites if your reputation's above half or something. Because I know the, uh, the last run that I went through here, um, I was going for a low reputation run, and yeah, no. There was uh, no termites. <laughs> and actually, the funny part is, um, yeah, I'm calling it a low reputation run. It's also known as a I completely misunderstood which symbol did what run. Um, yeah, so that happens. Also, that guy's super dead. Well, whoops. Anyway, anyway. So, what we want to do here is, uh, yeah, we ideally want to get maybe a couple more attack cards, if it's at all possible. Uh, send out the, uh, Mr. Leon. Lion, or whatever you want to call him. Hopefully he'll be able to do some damage, and uh, yeah, then just kind of gang pile everybody up in the capital. And hopefully we'll be able to do so before morning. So if you didn't know, uh, the moon card is arguably your best friend for a reputation uh, building type run in this. Because as soon as morning hits, you get cash. And yeah. I kind of wish that there was maybe a thing that said, hey, maybe don't tax everybody. You know, maybe uh, don't do that kind of thing. Because, yeah, as soon as morning hits, that's when you get uh, your payday. And that's also when everybody friggin' hates you for being a taxing douche, because you've basically come in and taken all their money caches. And, uh, yeah, then uh, your reputation goes down for every day that you end up uh, continuing on a fight, which is why if you ever run into those situations where you just couldn't get to the capital, and you're, you know, you wind up with a completely bottomed-out reputation, that is why... It's not because of uh, maybe taking the wrong places, but I mean, as long as you end up fighting the fights relatively quick, 
you can usually get away with a lot more. I'm going to go ahead and retreat there, because they got some damage off, but that's all they need to be able to do for now. So if you go here... Man, they're, yeah, they're kind of ruthless on this one. And the funny part is, yeah, the AI is very different, uh, depending on which version you're actually playing. Man, what a dickhead! Why would you even do that? Like, why would you Why would you go take the frickin' temple that you have no reason to take? Anyway, um, so yeah, that, they're very different in the different versions, so like in this one they tend to kind of all lump together and fight as one big army more often than not. Um, whereas in the SNES version, again, if you left anything undefended, they would immediately send out a unit in a beeline for that particular thing. Yeah, the squad's dangerous. Uh, but yeah, so, for example, like, if I took that town on the left and I sent somebody to attack it, in this version, if they were close by, they would probably try to take it, or if there was nothing else going on, they would try to take it. In the SNES version, it was just immediately somebody would leave the fight and go take that town. So one thing that you could potentially do is just send griffin squads out to really far away towns, and then just move units on and off the tile, and every time that they would move off the tile, they just send somebody out to get it. And then as soon as they got close, you put somebody onto that tile, they're like, oh, well it's defended now, I guess I'll just leave, and then they just run away again. So you could potentially distract really large uh, amounts of their, actual, of their army from really far away, because apparently their scouting is amazing. Uh, but yeah, I think um, like if uh, this next run with the Griffins there doesn't quite do it, then we might have to call it. Let's have to go get other stuff done. And all that kind of thing. So there we go, we'll just let them scamper off. Speaking of scampering... Um, yeah, if you... Hold on one second here. Okay, and back. Fight it out. So those guys are fighting it out. Oh, by the way, also you may have noticed there's a little bit more reverb to the fight it out and all of the other voice type things in this one. It's, it's all cool sounding. Instead of like, fight it out, it's like a fight it out kind of thing. They're fighting it out with the Batmans, I guess. Alright, there we go, and we'll let them scamper off, as you do, because they're having a little bit of a hard time fighting this one squad. Ah, they're having a bad day. They're having a bad day, but hopefully Lion will come in and save everybody, because, uh, everybody else is a little bit dead right now. This has not gone ideally. <laughs> as it often doesn't. Uh, honestly, for your Griffin squad, you usually want to put your best units into it. Because even though they're the ones that are going to be taking the capital, uh, usually you're going to get a pretty big reputation up from just winning the fight anyway. So, you know, it gives you a chance. And usually having your leader in there is not the worst idea either, just because it uh, gets them a reasonable amount of levels, while also still not ruining their reputation and alignment and all that, all that much. So yeah, all of that kind of business. Oh, by the way, uh, before, I for before I forget, um, so I was covering the uh, different uh, different versions, you know, version differences and all that kind of thing, and uh, yeah, I actually forgot to mention uh, uh, Vampires, Were-Tigers, and the End Boss, because I can't help but notice, uh, all, all three of them seem to have gotten buffs uh, in, um, in this version. So I'll make sure to note that later, but yeah, I, I believe that all three of them did get uh, full and proper buffs. Because uh, the, the vampires seem to be able to actually do damage, the, uh, the were-tigers actually seem to be as strong as their name implies. Um, actually, uh, werewolves, like, I, I found them pretty weak in the, uh, in the original, and then wound up having them as a regular, like, actually useful thing uh, in, my, in my latest run-through of this. Uh, but yeah, so all those seem better. And yeah, the end boss was drastically harder. Like, I think I showed up at an actual higher level than I did in my original run. And uh, and still, like, with a double... Like, I kid you not, double princess squad. 
uh, with uh, with another caster, with a healer, and hang on, what was it? No, it was two paladins, two princesses, and a shaman, I believe. Fight it out. And yeah, they still um, almost bottomed out the reputation thing with how long it took for them to beat the last boss. So, you know, there's that. So they're he's definitely a bit tougher in this one for some reason. Um, I think it's just because, yeah, he was kind of an, a complete and utter pushover. Like, even uh, Rashidi is tougher. But yeah, the the the, uh, the ogre, he's way, way, way tougher. Like, legitimately able to take out high-level units in, in one hit sometimes amounts of tougher. I say sometimes because he, it's more of like... Um, it's more like he's got a massive AoE, and then if that gets them above uh, above half health, he has the like follow up death move, which I think he had in the original as well. Uh, but if you didn't know, uh, he has the same effect as the death card, just every round. So the idea is he throws out a few AoEs and a single target, and then he throws out a uh, instant death move. So anybody that's under half health uh, will die off instantly. Now, has my birdie reached the stand place yet? Really, there's so many fights that they can't even move an inch without another encounter. Fight it out. You know, come to think of it as a board game type thing, this almost makes me wonder if this would turn into a risk type scenario. Where you're just sitting there throwing dice at each other for half an hour, trying to resolve all the different uh, fights and all that. Actually, there's been a few cases... <laughs> it's actually the reason that my wife never, uh, never plays risk with me. So there was one game a couple of years ago. Actually, it's been like three years ago, I think. Wherein, I was just sitting there the entire time, just slowly expanding through North America. Every time that somebody would get within the coastal region, would go and like ruthlessly crush the ever-loving hell out of them, but I would never expand to past North America. We're just slowly building up and building up and, you know, playing nice with everybody there, like, oh yeah, don't worry about it, you know, I'm not attacking you, I'm not doing anything. I'm just sitting here, I'm enjoying my continent, you know, don't have to worry, and hello, Mr. Debonair! Oh. Well, I guess we surrendered to Debonair. Okay, whatever, that's uh, probably a good spot to end it on. Anyway, <laughs> to, to finish, um, yeah, whatever, we'll just all, we'll just assume that we all joined Debonair upon seeing his friggin' gorgeous locks. Um, the, uh, so to end that story, yeah, um, I was just sitting there amassing units this entire time, and since I wasn't attacking anybody, nobody saw me as a threat, until suddenly in one turn, and about, like, three and a half hours of throwing dice... <laughs> Ended up winning the entire, like, took over the entire world in one turn. <laughs> so, it was, uh, yeah, th that game can be a little bit, um, a little bit RNG heavy is the thing. So that's basically what I did. I put, like, a thousand armies <laughs> on one continent and then just, like, took over everything at once. Um, yeah, let's just say that that's a good way to make your relatives never want to play a single game with you of that particular game ever again. So don't do that if you like Risk. It's funny because I even got a fancy version of Risk called Risk Europe. We actually have to bring in siege engines for castles and stuff like that. And it's a really interestingly balanced game and everything, and I've only ever been able to convince anybody to play it once in two and a half years. So that's um, nifty. Risk Europe is fun, though. Just, just nobody wants to play with me. <laughs> Any dang ways, so that's about that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave it here for today, and uh, yeah. I'm uh, going to try that GURPS thing, going to try to make a board game out of uh, March of the Black Boy, and we'll see how it goes. Like, maybe it'll be maybe it'll be awesome, maybe we can, if it's functional, maybe we can submit the idea, like, go track down Matsuno and like, here, go make an official version of this, please. <laughs> like, how awesome would that be, you know? Just, ah, that'd be the best. So, here's open, here's open, um, and uh, yeah, you have a fantastic day. Take care, and uh, thank y'all for stopping by. Have a good one.